Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with an auto review and I hope you are doing well. This time it's a review about a auto watch. It's about the Garmin Instinct Solar Tactical Edition. So if you are looking for a new auto watch that is rugged and never runs without juice, then you should definitely watch this video. Enjoy! And welcome back to the review on the Garmin Instinct Solar Tactical Edition. Um, for those of you who just tuned into my channel for the very first time, my name is Gijs. I am a outdoor gear and bike and gadget reviewer and I'm based in the totally flat Netherlands. Um, if you like what I do at the end of this video, then please give the video a like and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Many thanks in advance. Now, for those of you who follow me already for some while, welcome back to my channel. Nice having you here again. And also, thank you so much for all the nice comments that you gave me on the VSSL coffee grinder that I did a while ago because that was no, well, not really my cup of tea, but you like the video um, when I read the comments. So thank you so much for that as well. Now, for those of you who just tuned into my channel for the very first time, um, it's maybe convenient to know that in the description below, there are a lot of useful links on uh, basically products that are related to this video and also to my outdoor gear favorites and to the kit that I use to shoot these kind of videos. So if you're interested, just dive into the um, description below. Now, let's start with the review on the Garmin Instinct Solar Tactical. Um, this review starts about two years ago already. And there is a reason why I am so very late with this review. Because about two years ago, Garmin sent me the first Garmin uh, non-solar, the normal Instinct. And I went on with reviewing and after half a year, uh, Garmin and I had a little chat because the Solar Edition came on the market and we decided to do a full review on the Solar Edition instead of the regular one. Now, a year ago, I was doing this review, this same review that I'm doing now. But during this um, recording session, uh, my voice kept deteriorating and in the end it disappeared and I could not finish the video. Now, most of those of you who follow me already for at least one year, you know what happened. Uh, during that year, I had to do a lot of examinations by doctors. Um, exercises with a speech therapist and about i think in december my voice was coming back again now to do this video for me this is really a big thing because i hope to basically put an end to a quite bad period in my life because being a presenter being able to do these kind of videos but not having a voice it was not very nice so that's why i am so very late with the review on the garmin instinct solar now, in the meantime, um, the other thing is that Garmin also released the Instinct 2 a couple of months ago. Um, so why am I still doing this review? Well, in the first place, because I want to get this period done. The second reason is that this Instinct, because it's been with me for about one and a half years by now, it's been going to a lot of different places. It's going to Sweden, to Austria, to Switzerland. Um, of course, a lot of hikes in the Netherlands. It's gone to Belgium. So many nice adventures with this watch and I like it to be totally honest and maybe this is already giving the verdict away. I like this watch a lot. So I decided to do this review. Um, the watch will still be available, of course. Um, and the other thing is, is that the Instinct 2, it's a little bit more expensive than this watch. Uh, and it is also a more sports orientated watch. So that's the reason why I am doing this review anyway. Now, um, the Garmin Instinct, I put it on my precise scale and I measured a weight of 53 grams. 53 grams, that's absolutely the lightest watch, outdoor watch that I have ever tested. What I also do like is the size because the casing itself, it has a size of 45 millimeters by 45 millimeters and it is 15.3 millimeters thick, which I like because my wrist, I'm not a small guy, uh, not a big guy. My wrist is quite small and this one actually fits really nicely on my wrist. Um, I've tested 
these big, rugged, almost military style outdoor watches. And they always look very, very bulky. And because of the more heavy weight, I don't like wearing them when, for example, running, because you've got this movement uh, on your wrist all the whole time. Now, with this watch, this is absolutely not the case. What I also do like is the materials that the watch is made out of. The wristband itself is made out of a, a rubbery material and the wristband it is 22 millimeters wide. Um, I've measured the circumference and it will fit on wrists that have a circumference of 132 millimeters to 224 millimeters. So that is quite a wide range. Now, the watch casing itself, it is made out of a 100% fiber enhanced uh, polymers, which in my um, world basically translate to a sort of plastic material. The big advantage of the plastic material is that when you put the watch on, um, it feels quite warm immediately. And that's quite different to some other outdoor watches with metal casings that I've tested because they feel cold in the beginning. And also when the outside temperature is a little bit colder, um, this watch really feels very, very comfortable. Now, when you get the watch, of course, the first thing that you do is get it out of its packaging and then you should charge it. But before I can show you this, I need to basically redecorate my studio a little bit because I have to move some cameras and move the watch in a very different position. So bear with me while you watch some beauty shots um, when I redecorate my studio. And welcome back. Now, what I needed to do was build a solid metal frame above my desk because I have to have a camera up there to have a look at the watch face itself so I can show you what I need to do. Now, um, what I mentioned before, take it out of the package and then you need to charge it. Now, what I absolutely like about the Garmin um, is that the back, it has got this slot or maybe a socket where you can put the USB cable in that comes of course with uh, the Garmin. And this construction, what I do like about it, it clicks very, very firmly in the back of the Garmin. And this is totally different with some other outdoor watches that I tested recently because they've got these magnetic connectors and you put it onto its back, onto the connector. And what I've noticed that if you don't do this very carefully, sometimes the watch doesn't charge at all. Or when you move, for example, um, the uh, wire a little bit, it's a little bit off center and then it doesn't charge as well. This is absolutely bulletproof. Now, this is the first way to charge it. Uh, of course, the USB goes into a computer, into a adapter, but the adapter is, does not come with the Garmin, so you will have to buy one separate, and probably you have it at home already for some other device. One thing that I did not mention um, is the fact that the watch face, the glass on top of it, and let me get my pencil, it is made out of a uh, type of glass, which is called Power glass by Garmin, but power glass is in fact Corning Gorilla glass. And in the one and a half year that I've been testing this one, um, the glass, it still looks pretty much okay, except for when I was welding the metal frame above the desk at the moment, you might see that there is a little spot in there because I wanted to do this job very fast. I did not wear glass with the long sleeves. So one of the welding spots, the sparks, it came onto the glass and it actually melted it a little bit. But hey, does this bother me? No, it does not bother me. When we look at the watch face itself, I was talking already about charging it. Uh, because this is the solar uh, edition, of course, it charges with the sun. And what you can see on the watch face at the moment is this circle. This circle says or indicates if the watch has been, is being charged by the sun when you're outdoors. And then you will see not a black circle, but you will see more white circles. Now, the watch face itself, and now I will have to get a torch. There is my torch. Well, you can see the watch face behind the power glass, you will see a light gray area and a more darker area. Now, the light gray area is a 100% solar panel. That means that if sunlight hits this part of the solar panel, and it's not that much actually, um, it transfers 100% of that energy into the battery basically. 
The second solar panel is the more black part, and this is a 10% solar panel. That means that 90% of this solar panel is transparent. And I think uh, that this has got to do with the fact that, of course, all the symbols and also the numbers that you see in the watch face need to shine through this second solar panel. So this is how you charge the Garmin Instinct Solar with solar energy or just with the USB cable. And I'll get to the efficiency and um, how handy this is later on in this review. And for those of you who don't know this, in the description below I also got a timestamp. So if you want to look back at certain sections of this video, because this is going to be a long one, then just go into the description and click on the time that you're wishing with the subject that follows in that video. Just handy for you to know. Now, the Garmin has got five buttons and there are two buttons positioned on the right side, one here and one here, and there are three buttons positioned on the left side. Now, the buttons, um, what I do like about them is that they've got this sort of structure on top of them. And when I was with my brother-in-law doing some uh, snowshoe walking in Switzerland in the snow, and I was wearing thick winter gloves and I put the watch over the sleeve of my glove. And also with those thick winter gloves, um, the buttons were still very usable. So that way it's a very practical watch. Now, um, let me talk a little bit more about the buttons themselves because every button has got a double function. Um, on top left, you will see the control button and when you look into the watch face itself, you will see that there is also written light. Now, that means that when you do a, a short press, that the backlight will be activated. Of course, you won't see it because we're in the studio and the light of the studio is overpowering um, the light of the watch itself. When I push it a little bit longer, I get into a menu and by pushing the menu button, which is maybe a, bit, a little bit confusing, but you will see that there is written up and the ABC button there is written down on the watch face. I can go down in the menu and I can go up in the menu. And the symbol that is basically inside this uh, little circle, that's the one that is active at the moment. Now, what you should know is that the GPS button, which is the top right button, um, is basically a enter button and it's not stated on the um, watch face itself because simply there's no space. But when I press enter and then it will power off in this case, so let's not go that way. Um, but if I press enter, for example, then I can put the battery saver on. And that means now what you will see is that it changed to 55 days of battery life, basically. Now, let me go back. Now it's battery saving is off and I still got 21 days left. Now the set button, and you will see it here in the screen as well, it is the back button. So when I go back, I'm out of this whole menu. Um, I'll press it again because there are some nice features in um, this menu. And the most important ones um, is basically this one. Where is it? Night vision. Uh, the night vision mode, and this is the tactical edition of this Garmin, the night vision mode um, means that if you put it on, that you can still read the watch face when you put the backlight on with night vision goggles, and that the night vision goggles will not be overpowered by the backlight of the watch, which I think is for a military purpose, or maybe for hunters, a quite clever uh, thing. The other thing is the stealth mode. Of course, it's off now. When you put stealth mode on, again, a tactical thing, um, then the watch is basically not transmitting or receiving any data. So that means that you are really stealth. Stealthy, is that how you say it? Okay, this is what I wanted to show you, what is hidden behind the control button. Now, let's go back and let's continue with the menu button. If I press the menu button briefly, then you will see that I get another watch face. And this makes me sc scroll basically to a lot of different widgets that I installed in this behind this button. And of course, with the up button, I go up through all those um, uh, widgets. And by pressing the down button, I go down in all these in these screens. 
Uh, what you will see is that in these screens I've got the compass, twice, and I've got the barometric pressure, barometer pressure, barometric pressure, Bar barometer, it's a very difficult word for me to remember to say this correctly, so sorry if I say it wrong again and again and again. Um, and I've also got the um, temperature in this widget screen basically, and also the altitude. Now, when I press the menu button a little bit longer, then I get into a menu behind this button. And here I can change, for example, the watch face. If I press the GPS enter button, I get into a lot of different sort of screens that I can use. And I'll go back to the one that I prefer, which is basically this one. Now, press the back button and I'll get into the watch face um, or the main menu behind the menu button. Uh, history settings. In settings there is one thing that is quite nice. Enter button again. Um, here I can, for example, add a lot of different widgets to that widget button that is hidden behind the menu. I'm not going to do that now. Um, what is also quite interesting is that the watch face, if I'm here, what I can do is now I can adapt every small detail in the watch face that I would like to have in there. So when I press the enter button, I can customize it. And um, the customizing starts with basically what I see in this little round thingy. And now I can change it to, for example, the date, my heart rate, the steps that I've taken today, the height, uh, the barometric pressure trend, well, there's more, but I like it just to have the solar symbol. So press enter. Now I get a second uh, screen that I can adjust. And basically by scrolling down or up, I get, of course, the same sort of um, choices that I had in this one. Uh, and I like to have the barometric pressure in here because at the moment I am in the Netherlands. so. Barometric pressure is a little bit more interesting to me than when I'm, for example, in the Alps, uh, where the altitude is going to be way more interesting for me. Now, let's go back and back. Save changes. No, nope, because I didn't do anything. Enter and back. Now, there's one other thing that I think you need to know, and that is the sensors and accessory part in this menu. Now, when I enter the sensor and as accessories, menu I can add a other sensor like for example a food pot but what is more interesting to me is the altimeter and the barometer um, because behind this screen if I press the enter button again now I can calibrate this and I will get back to this calibration process and the reasons behind this calibration why you should do this uh, later on in this review so let me go back now behind the ABC button when I press it just briefly, I go up and down the menu, but when I press it a little bit longer, what happens? I get into the last screen that I basically had into this menu. And the last one that I apparently um, had is the compass screen. Um, it tells me that I am at 8 meters and that I've not been changing any altitude lately. But when I go down, the one that I see is the altimeter. Again, um, it's been quite level for the last four hours because I've been not going anywhere. So eight meters was my lowest point, eight meters is my highest point, and I am at eight meters at this moment. But when I'm in the mountains or doing a hike in the Ardennes, for example, or just going up a dike, you will see that this absolutely changes. Now, the next screen that I have is the barometric, barometric, barometric pressure. Uh, and you can see that it is here for the last 12 hours. I can adapt this or change this, this period. Um, I can do 24 hours, I can do 12 hours, and I believe I can do six and four hours. I'm not really sure about this. But this gives me the trend of what has been happening with the pressure. And because it's, you see it's rising, so that means most of the time that a uh, high pressure area is approaching and that means most of the time nice fair weather. Um, the lowest pressure was 1010.5 during those 12 hours and the highest pressure was 1016 and at the moment we are at 1016. But again more on this later. 
Now, when I press the GPS button, the enter button, briefly, I get in a different menu. Um, it's got a tactical setting that I will not discuss now. It's got the jump master that's for people who like to jump out of aeroplanes. I did it once, will never do it again. Um, I loved that one time, but I was really, really scared. Um, it's got the track me function so that it logs where you're heading and going. A navigation function, which I um, hardly ever use because when I navigate somewhere in an area that I don't know, I most of the time use a analog compass and a very good topographical map because that's what I prefer. But this is what my, is more interesting to me in my life. Because in favorites, I have got a um, widget for my trail run. And I've got a widget for running, for my indoor rowing, for hiking, for biking. Well, I don't have a pool and I hardly ever swim in a pool. So this is there, but I should have taken it out. Um, but when you click the trail run that I use most by enter, then you will see that what it says is the altimeter current calibration is at eight meters. Now, the software or the firmware that I'm running in this watch is firmware 16.5. Just before this recording, I also tried a beta version of the 17.0. Um, but what happened was that my altimeter and barometer went totally in the wrong way. In a couple of hours, it changed from basically about 1020 millibars and the next morning when I woke up, it was at minus 1300 millibars uh, and I could not adapt this. So I took the 17 version better off again and reinstalled the 16.5 version. Um, and I did not see this before this 16.5 version. Maybe it was there already in, in a previous update. Uh, but I like this because now it makes me calibrate the height that I'm in. Because when I'm using this watch, when I travel, for example, abroad, I often just push the trail run button and I go running. And then sometimes I did not calibrate it. And then you get a really funny height profile at the end of your run. So that it basically checks what you're doing is really nice. Now, um, I'm not going to recalibrate this again, but if I do this and I hit the record button, then it starts recording my run. And that is really a nice, a lot of data visible um, afterwards, which is of course nice visible on the app that Garmin um, does and also on the computer um, app that it has. But I'll tell you a little bit more on that later as well. Now that was by pressing the GPS button shortly, but when I press it a little bit longer, it starts acquiring satellites. Um, but since I'm indoors, it's not going to show you anything which is a little bit of a pity, of course. Um, and now it tells me that the GPS signal is stronger outside away from trees and buildings. Yes, that's pretty logical. Um, whenever you use this direct button to record, for example, your uh, away point, um, I've noticed that the GPS, it sometimes, depending on where you are, it takes between about 15 seconds to sometimes up to 60, 60 seconds and before it's got full satellite reception. And I've noticed that um, some other watches are a little bit faster in this respect. Now, last but not least, the set button, I already told you, um, it's basically the back button, but if I press it a little bit longer, I get into the alarm menu. And um, by this way, I can set a lot of different alarms, whatever I like. Now, there's one um, alarm that I will discuss later, and that's the storm alert alarm. Now, let me go back into the watch face again, and this is now how back in my main screen. A little bit more on my main screen, what you will also see is in this case, this is the status of the battery. Again, it's not charging by sun at the moment because this is totally black. The barometric pressure trend, of course, the time, and this is the sunrise and the sunset times. Um, behind the menu, there's one thing that I would like to show you again. I have got this, um, there is a solar intensity screen. Now it's totally black at the moment, but if I'm outside, how much sun it has been generating into the battery. Now that was the solar intensity. Then we get to the uh, saturation screen that I'm not going to talk about now. This is my heart rate monitoring, which is quite funny because it says that my heart rate is at the moment 64, but probably 
Um, <laughs> now, how this can be possible, I don't know, because it's not on my wrist. Uh, but you will see that my um, lowest heart rate was uh, 53 for the last four hours, and my highest has been 104. Now, um, my day, that shows basically how active I've been. My connection to my smartwatch, because it has, of course, got a smartwatch connection. I'm not using it at the moment, because then you will see all the apps coming by every time. I've got no events planned. That's not totally true, because next week I have a nice gig. This is the screen that shows the weather. And uh, because I've not connected it to the smartphone, to my smartphone at the moment, it doesn't show anything, because this weather forecast is not based on the barometer but it's based on a general app. And I've noticed in real life that the app, it's not that accurate. So if you are into the mountains, always check the local weather station for the accurate weather forecast. And don't trust the app that Garmin has for this watch. The last one, this is basically my energy levels, which is not too interesting to you. And uh, this is the screen that is interesting to you because this says the date, the moon phase or the sun, it says sunrise and sunset, but it also sets the twilight periods. And if you like photography uh, and you want to do some really cool, nice pictures on the most beautiful moments of the day, then these are the times that you have to take into account because this is not only the golden hour, but you've got the blue hours as well. And you can do really some nice magical things. So for me, this is a screen that I added in the widget menus uh, that I really like a lot. Now, these are all the things that are hidden behind the buttons. Now, let me get a little zip. Because my voice, it's not still 100% okay. And I need to take care of my throat. Now, um, I mentioned already that I use the watch a lot for rowing and um, trail running. And of course, also for hiking, just to keep the data, how much energy I'm using during the day. Um, on the back, and you saw this already briefly, there is a optical sensor, the green lights, and they switch off immediately when I do this, which is a little bit of a pity. Um, but this is a, a, a green LED and this is a green LED. Now, this one and this one, they are optical sensors. Now, the way how a optical sensor works, it's quite nice to know. Because what happens is that these green LEDs, they shine light into my wrists and basically into the veins of my wrist. Now, what happens when your heart is pumping and it releases a burst of blood, then um, this first release has got a order density. It's more an intense type of blood than what follows after this one. Uh, you can compare it to opening a lock. When you open a lock, the first flow of water will be quite turbulent and what follows is more tranquil. Now, based on this principle, a optical sensor works because the green light that is transmitted into my blood veins, blood is red and green light is being absorbed by red. So what happens with those first in high intense blood type, um, there is more green light absorbed by the blood. That means that the optical sensors get less information back from this green light. They don't sense that much. But the flow that comes behind this first burst, it's of a lesser intensity. So more or lesser green light is being absorbed and more green light is being reflected back into the sensors. Now, and that is how a heart rate monitor with an optical sensor works. Um, I've noticed in real life that this one, and I've measured and compared it to some polar um, heart rate measurement devices, um, and that are very accurate. This one is pretty spot on most of the time. There's one thing that you should take care of, and that is the fact that you need to wear this one not to lose on your wrist, because otherwise you get some faulty measurements. Now, uh, the wearing comfort, because, and I will tilt it a little bit, what you will see is that um, the optical sensor, it's made out of a uh, transparent um, resin. It is a sort of a hilly that's on top of the watch casing itself. 
I've noticed that this one is absolutely very, very comfortable, even if you wear the watch tight onto your wrist. And it's quite different to some other uh, outdoor watches that I've tested that are not that comfortable in this respect. Since I've been talking about the optical sensor in relation to heart rate monitoring, um, it's also nice to talk about one thing, one screen that I passed by very quickly, and that is the blood saturation measurement screen. As you can see here, um, my last measurement, it was uh, 98%. Now, for most healthy people, the saturation, the blood saturation, that means the amount of oxygen that is in your blood, um, should be between 95 and the 100%. So, 98 for me, it's absolutely fine. Why is this important? Well, for me, living in the lowlands, there is enough oxygen around me. But when I go into the mountains, the higher I get, the less oxygen is there. That's also the reason why a lot of climbers to, for example, Mount Everest, they just need oxygen tanks to get a lot of oxygen into their blood and into their um, muscles, just to keep going. And not only their muscles, also their brain, of course. Now, in the Netherlands, if I'm healthy, 95 100% most of the time this is absolutely fine but when I'm going into the mountains uh, and I'm going from sea level to for example 4000 meter in a couple of days then sometimes I feel it I feel comfortable by just checking my blood saturation levels um, and it never happened to me that I went below that 95% yeah maybe I went once time when I climbed Mont Blanc but I did not have a watch with a blood saturation measurement thingy on it um, but in this way it can be convenient that if you go into high mountains and that you can check your blood saturation and if it gets below that 95% that you just take it a little bit slower. Now, I would not buy this watch because it has got a blood saturation measurement thingy, but I would buy it because of the altimeter and the barometer that is in this watch because they are absolutely super. And now let me explain you a little bit more about how a barometer and a altimeter work together, because this is very important to understand this watch or any watch that has this function. Now let me go back and let me put the altimeter screen in there. A altimeter only works because there is a barometer pressure sensor inside the Garmin and this sensor senses the pressure that is being put onto this sensor. Now the altimeter and the barometer only work because we made some agreements on this globe and the first one is that at sea level which is zero meters we agreed that the pressure is 1013 millibars and I'm talking about millibars because everybody still uses this although I know that hectopascal is the official notation. Now, zero meters is 1013 millibars. Because of physics, we all know that when you go up a mountain, that the pressure gets lower. And that is by one millibar when we climb eight meters. So every eight meters, it descends by one millibar. Now, because of this, we can relate every altitude to the pressure at sea. Now, what you should know now is that, for example, if you are into the mountains and you start uh, a hike up to a mountain hut, then you might climb from 1,000 meter to 3,000 meter. In this period, the pressure, when nothing else changes, the pressure will descend. So you come into your mountain hut at 3000 meters and the altimeter says it is 3000 meters. You go to bed, have a good sleep and the next morning you wake up and you look at the altimeter on your watch and you are all of a sudden at 2500 meter. How is this possible? Well, this is possible because weather fronts are moving. And the only explanation in this case is that a high pressure weather system has arrived in the area because a high pressure weather system relates to a higher barometric pressure and that 
translates into your watch in a lower altitude. Now, this is the key reason why you should calibrate your altimeter and your barometer a lot of times during a hike. Calibrate it as many times as is possible. Now, with the Garmin, there are several ways to calibrate your watch and I will walk you through all of them because really this is key information to know. Um, the first one is when I am into the ABC screen and I'm into, in this case, um, the uh, barometer, I can press the GPS button and I can calibrate it. Press it again and now there are several ways to calibrate this. The first one is to enter it manually. The second one is to use a digital electronic map as a reference or I can use the GPS height. Sometimes I do use the GPS height just because it's convenient. You know, it will search the satellites and it will put the height in there. But when you're into the mountains, um, it's not always accurate because sometimes mountains are interfering, sometimes forests or the leaves above you are interfering. So what I like to do most of the time is just to put the elevation in manually. And I can do this when I'm starting a hike. Most of the hikes, they've got these direction poles and they tell you the altitude. Or when I look at the map, I have these horizontal curly lines, the height lines that are at a certain height. Um, but sometimes also landmarks can be a good indication for the height. When you're into a mountain hut or a cable lift, the height is always stated there. So this is what you put in first. Now, I'm at eight meters, so no problem here. Then the next screen is enter the sea level pressure. And that means yes. And now I can calibrate the barometric pressure. Now, what you need as a reference is basically a weather station number because they are the ones that are the most accurate. If you have that one, put it in and then both are calibrated in the correct way. I will leave it for the moment because it's fine. And by pressing um, the enter button, you can scroll through all the numbers. And by pressing it down, you scroll down. And by pressing it up, you go up. But I'm happy with what it is at the moment and I'm done. And now my calibration is complete. When I go back to the main screen in the barometer, and there are a few other things that might be interesting. Um, the plot, it's that 12 hour graphic that I have at the moment and check if I was right. I can do a 24 hours, 48 hours even, and a six hours, so not the four hours. Let's go back. Um, and then here is also one of the more important um, alerts. It's the storm alert. And it's off at the moment, but if I put it on, then I can adjust basically what is in here. And it alerts me when I have a difference of four millibars in three hour time, because then I know that a weather front is approaching quite quickly and that a weather change will be affecting basically my activity. So this is something that I really do think is absolutely good. Uh, then of course here you can change from millibars into hectopascals, the ones that I mentioned earlier, but I'll leave it in millibars. Back, back and back. Now the other screen that you need to calibrate is uh, the altimeter. And now let me get into the altimeter mode. In the screen you can see what I'm doing. I'm now scrolling through basically my widgets. Uh, but I can also, of course, do it by just pressing the ABC button a little bit longer. Now, this is uh, the temperature. This is the altitude screen. Now, when I press the GPS button, once I can calibrate it. And the calibration process is the same as for the barometer. I'm happy with this calibration complete because this is the altimeter. I don't have to put in, of course, the barometric pressure. Now, this kind of calibration, I do this when I'm on a hike and I've got 
you know, during the hike, several references points um, that tells me at what altitude I am. And when you do a, for example, a Grand Rodonné uh, hike here in Europe, um, most of the signposts that have the elevation also on them. Okay, this was the calibration of the altimeter, but there is one other feature that I absolutely think is unique to the Garmin um, instinct in this case. Now, the sensor mode, this is one thing that is really, really important. Because if I am in the Netherlands, it's a flat country. I don't have any real mountains, so any change in pressure will be done because of weather fronts, weather fronts coming into the country or departing the country, just the change of this. So when I put it, the sensor mode in barometer only, then it will know that every change in pressure is because of these weather fronts. But what I also can do, I can put it in altimeter only. And this is when I do, when I go to a mountainous area, because when I climb and descend mountains, um, the influence on the pressure will be much higher than just the coming and passing of weather fronts. So then I'm telling basically the barometer that every change in pressure is because of that I'm walking up or down a mountain and then it will be more accurate. Now, the other one that I can choose from is that the Garmin does the thinking for me. That's the auto mode. And when I press it, you will see immediately that there is a warning in screen and it says that the pressure changes will be automatically attributed to either weather or elevation. Now, in this case, the watch decides for me where this pressure change is coming from. And, the, and I think this is probably all got to do with algorithms and that kind of stuff. But I've been using it in the outer mode quite often here in the Netherlands and also into the mountains. Yes, it is not as accurate as when you have the choice between the two of them. But for general use, um, I've discovered that this outer mode is absolutely perfect. Now, that was a lot of information on how I use the watch in my outdoor life, but it does not say anything on how long you can use the watch or battery life. Now, because I've been using the watch for one and a half year by now, I've got a pretty good idea in general on battery life. Uh, but first I'll put in the screen the numbers that Garmin gave on their website on battery life in different circumstances. And if you want to have a closer, longer look at this, then please press the pause button. Now I'm recording this video in April and that means that I've just had the winter period and in the winter period the watch is on my wrist but most of the time it's under a sleeve or under a jacket so no solar charging whatsoever. Um, so I charge it with the USB cable with my computer and I've noticed and I put this in my agenda um, that about every three weeks I had a moment to charge the watch. And that is just with my daily routine using the watch every day, I'm sleeping with it, um, and also doing my exercises on a very regular basis. Now, the solar charging part, of course, I've been busy during the summer months by measuring this a lot, also with a lux meter. Now, in general, the sun generates about 50,000 to 100,000 lux on a sunny summer day. Now, of course, I did some measurements, and um, on a bright clear day in late autumn and early spring, I measured about 52,000 lux with the lux meter and the watch facing the sun directly. These are the ideal circumstances. Now with the watch on my wrist, the lux meter next to it and walking with both facing the sun direction but not holding them perfectly in the sun, I measured about 30,000 lux. Doing the same, but walking the opposite direction so that the watch face is not facing the sun, the amount of lux drops dramatically to 2300 lux. Doing the same on a day with overcast results in the almost the same measurements as on a sunny day and keeping the instinct in the shade. Now, where does this lead to my measurements? Um, that leads to the conclusion that in general, in my outdoor life, the Garmin Instinct Solar is not capable of charging the watch enough for a 
endless battery life in my outdoor routine. There's one exception to be made on this rather blunt remark, and that is if you have got the, the time on a day to put the Garmin into the sun directly for a couple of hours, for example, when you arrive early at the mountain hut, um, then it will charge the battery enough to have a endless stream of energy. So then it will never run without juice. Now, one thing that I did not talk about is about the connectivity of the Garmin to my smartphone. And let me grab my smartphone uh, because you will see, and I've opened the app already, um, that when I press this button, the blue one, then it will be, um, start connecting to my watch and it will synchronize. Now, today it's not that very interesting because you can see I've got no heart rate whatsoever at the moment and because it's not on my wrist. But if I go into my calendar and I go to, for example, yesterday, then you will see that there is some time. In. And this is the period that I've actually been rowing indoors. And then you get a result of my rowing. And I did 51 minutes and that was a 10 kilometer um, indoor rowing session. Now, if I go back to a day before, then you will see that in this period of time, there's nothing to be seen because it was basically in the studio because I was doing some tryouts for this recording session. But you can also see that I have been running yesterday, a 10 kilometer run. Um, you can see the time, it was one hour, it was a slow one and the calories that I burned. And when I go into the map, you can see that I get a map accurate projection on where I have been running. Now I can change, of course, this is the satellite. Uh, this is a hybrid image because it's a satellite with the map projected below it. But I can also choose just the map to make this one visible. There's a lot of things that I can tune uh, in the app itself. Um, and the computer, it works basically the same. One other thing that I've not been talking about, um, what is interesting to me, is um, the sleep monetization, monitoring because this is what tells me how I have been sleeping last night. Um, 36 minutes deep sleep, three hours and 40 minutes um, in a light sleep. The uh, REM sleep, three hours and eight minutes. So this gives a lot of information. Now, this is something that I like to do after exercising or when I've been into the mountains, for example, with my brother-in-law um, in Valumnetia, we did a nice track recording of uh, the climb that we did to the Piz Medel, um, which is absolutely super when you're getting back home and yeah, you basically you can relive everything behind the Connect app or just behind the computer with the Connect app on there. Um, this is all that I want to tell you about the, the computer connection from the Garmin Instinct Solar to the Connect app and my smartphone and my computer. Now, last but not least, a few words on the ruggedness of the Garmin Instinct Solar Tactical. Um, well, yes, it is a very rugged watch. The little stupid mistake that I did with the welding spot on uh, the power glass screen, well, I cannot blame Garmin for this. Uh, the watch casing and uh, the wristband, they are still 100% okay. Um, what is important to know because of this ruggedness, um, that this Garmin has been built conform military standards, MIL STD 810G. Now, what does this mean? It means that it is able to go up to 12,000 feet and that you can drop the watch from 122 centimeters onto the ground and nothing will happen. Yes, of course, it is shockproof, it is waterproof, and in my outdoor life, it's absolutely a very, very rugged watch. The thing that Garmin does with basically saying that it is built conform those military standards does not say that it is military standard certified. So there is one big difference and I asked Garmin about this but I never got an answer on this. Am I bothered about this? No, because in my outdoor life the watch is absolutely very very rugged. One small detail that I don't like and that really should be improved on a future model, that is basically the opening of uh, the barometer 
pressure sensor because, and I will show you this, it is positioned over here. It's this little slit and this little opening. And this is where my skin is. So sometimes you block these openings and then the pressure sensor cannot do its work for the full 100% accurate. I've also noticed that you need to clean these openings sometimes because they have the tendency to be clogged up with maybe mud but also just with skin and oily that's on your skin and then when they are closed or partly closed also this affects the operation of um, the barometer and the altimeter. So for a future design I would really change it into a more logical position uh, on the side that is not being influenced by dirt that easily or being blocked by just your skin. And now um, you see me wrapping the watch in the beginning's position again. It's time to head on to my verdict. How do I rate the Garmin Instinct Solar Tactical Edition? Now I already gave it away in the beginning of this video because I really love the Garmin Instinct Solar Tactical. In the first place because it is really comfortable to wear. It only weighs 53 grams and the size it's not that big and bulky on my rather small wrist. The materials, the resin of the casing and the rubber wristband, they are very comfortable to the skin as well. Uh, on the back side, the optical sensor, it is positioned in a nice way, it's very smooth, so you hardly ever feel it when you are, for example, running. What I do like about the Garmin is that the optical sensor really does its work very, very well. It's a very accurate heart rate measurement system. Now, I've been using it for trail running in my neighborhood and what I also do like is the uh, Garmin Connect app on my smartphone but also on my computer because after my run or after a hike I can basically relive this activity again and analyze data as much as I like. Now, um, the best thing about this Garmin in my opinion is the altimeter and the barometer. Um, how they work together and that you can calibrate them in more than one way. Regarding the solar panels on the Garmin Instinct Solar, well, I'm not too convinced about them. In my outdoor life, the watch is simply not enough in the sun directly to charge the battery completely, so I will have to charge it once in a while with the provided USB cable. But the solar panels, they've got one unexpected extra in my life. Because everywhere I go with this watch, people ask me about what kind of outdoor watch are you using? And when I tell them that it is a solar power um, supported watch, they are always very, very interesting and nice conversations start. So that is sort of a unexpected bonus. Now, if you want to have this conversation about the solar panels every time in um, the mountain hut, that's up to you. But it is also a price thingy because the Garmin Instinct Solar Tactical retails for 399 euros and 99 cents. If you buy the same watch but without the solar part, you pay 299 euros and 99 cents. So in this way, it is way cheaper if you don't want the solar panel support. Now, one thing I mentioned the Garmin Instinct 2 um, in the beginning, the new kit on the block, that one retails for 499 euros and 99 cents. So that one is 100 euros more expensive than this Garmin Instinct that basically, in my opinion, does everything that I want in my outdoor life. And therefore, I rate the Garmin Instinct Solar Tactical Edition at 9.2 points out of 10 total. Now I really hope you liked this video and if you did then please give it a like and leave a comment below. Also if you've got any questions, suggestions or remarks please post it in the comment section below because I'm more than happy to answer everything that you can throw at me. Now, if you really like this video and you did not subscribe yet, then please do it now because with more subscribers, I can make more videos. If you're not totally convinced yet after seeing this review, then please have a look at my outdoor gear favorite playlist up there and also in the description below. 
uh, and decide after seeing that playlist if you want to subscribe to my channel anyway. And thank you already in advance if you do. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you the next time. Enjoy the outdoors and stay safe. Ciao, ciao! Now, one thing that I did not mention yet is that when uh, it became apparent that my voice was not going to come back very soon last year, uh, I called Garmin and I asked them, what should I do with the instinct? And they said, you can keep it. And then I said, no, that's not possible. Send me an invoice and I will pay for it because I like this watch a lot. Now, they sent me an invoice and on it was zero euros. They apparently don't want my money. Um, am I grateful for this? Yes, in some sort of way I am. But I don't like this as an independent reviewer. So what did I do? I went online to justdigit.org and you should check this as well. And I made a donation to them. Um, justdigit.org, they dig holes in Africa um, together with local people. And because of these holes, they call them buns, water, even in the dry period, it's collected and in these buns, plants will grow again um, and in this way i still paid for the garmin instinct that i can call officially mine now thank you so much for watching again bye